First of all, do not quit your day job. Do not uh, go home and hang up a shingle and say you're a church consultant and assume you're going to make a living. You won't do it. There's very few uh, church consultants uh, in the United States who make a living solely off of their church consulting. Now, there are a few. Uh, those people who consult in the area of fundraising for like new building projects and stuff can usually make a living. Uh, if, if you're consulting in the area of audio visuals and that sort of thing, maybe you can make a living. But the type of consulting we're talking about here, which is church growth, church health type consulting, um, usually it's very difficult to have enough clients and be able to charge high enough fees to make a full-time living wage unless you have some sort of other income uh, that supports you. Now, some church consultants appear to be full-time, and they are full-time, but uh, if you get to know them, you discover that they have other resources financially. They may have a spouse that has a great job, and the spouse provides the consistent wage, while their wage as consultants is a little bit inconsistent, and so they're not relying on their consulting wage to you know, pay the bills on a consistent basis. Some consultants have uh, worked in other fields of business and things, and sometimes they have uh, money that they've accumulated from other careers, uh, and they use that, um, either the, the interest or the uh, principal, uh, to live on uh, while they're working. Uh, but uh, by and large, most consultants are going to be doing consulting as a part of their current job or on the side of their, their current job. So that would be my recommendation. Keep doing what you're doing. Start doing consulting as either a part of your current job or on the side. And then if God so blesses and builds it to where it can be full time, then someday you can make that, that transition. But don't just automatically you know, quit right now thinking that you're going to be able to, uh, uh, to do that. Because in most cases, you will not be able to. Uh, the second thing is you need to develop a platform for yourself. You need to have some sort of a platform from which you can jump or propel yourself uh, into the community uh, of the church as a church consultant. Now, <clears throat> there, there can be different kinds of platforms. For instance, some of you are denominational executives. Well, that is your platform. As a denominational executive, you naturally have a constituency that looks to you for help. And so that is your platform. So you make, you make yourself available as a consultant. Uh, now, <clears throat> many of you are, as denominational executives, you're available to the pastors for many denominational reasons. But they may not know that you're available to do church assessments. So what you might want to do is somehow or other communicate to the churches you already serve, that um, you've, you've taken training and things like that, and you're now available to come into their church and help them assess the church uh, for the future. They may not realize that you're even available for that. Um, I was just with an American Baptist group up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and that's exactly what the denominational executive has done. He has put together some information, brochures, and stuff like that, and he does church assessments. Well, that's part of his job, but it's a different element. Now, he's, he's advertising that he's available for that. Churches are asking him to come in and do church assessments. So they're not just calling him in for denominational business, but for church assessments. So make sure that your churches know that you're available uh, for that. But that's your platform. Another platform would be if you were teaching at a, a Bible college, a seminary, a university, something like that. When you teach at a school, there's a natural constituency of people who have graduated from that school, churches and things that look to that school for resourcing and help. And so if you're a professor at a school, that becomes part of your platform. Because people will call and say, you know, we need some help. And, uh, you know, if you make it known, make, again, you have to make it known to secretaries and people in the school that you're available to do church assessments, that you're doing church consulting now. And then somebody will call in, they'll get a secretary and say, is there anybody there who can help us? We're struggling with our church. 
and the secretary will, tell you, or secretary will say, oh, yes, uh, professor so-and-so helps churches with that. Let me put you through or give you his phone number or email or something like that. But that, that becomes your, your platform. Uh, some some uh, church consultants have been able to springboard off of a platform of their own church. Uh, if their church has gotten large enough that it's gotten well known and other churches begin to look to them for help, then they're, they're able sometimes to talk to their leaders at the church and get permission to take a certain amount of time off from their own church ministry. Uh, I have one friend that his church actually gives him six weeks a year off, and it's not counted as vacation. It's not counted as study leave. It's six weeks a year to help other churches. They see that as part of their ministry to assist other churches. And they're giving him six Sundays a year, uh, basically, to go around and help other churches. So that's uh, one or two every quarter, every two or three months. Uh, he can work with them. Uh, so, you know, if your church has developed a ministry and other people are looking to you for help, you could talk to your board and say, could I, uh, you know, have... Uh, you know, four weeks a year uh, that I could, uh, you know, serve other churches. An easy way to do that, by the way, is just ask them that every time there's a fifth Sunday in a month, can you have that fifth Sunday off? That happens four times a year. It happens once every 13 weeks, once a quarter. There's a fifth Sunday. And uh, they could typically give you that, and maybe once a quarter, then you could work with one quarter, one church a year. And it wouldn't have to be particularly that exact weekend, but you're just getting one weekend every quarter off, basically, to work with churches. But that becomes your platform. Now, if, if you're not at a school, you're not a denominational executive, you, your church isn't to that point, then you still need a platform. Because uh, how are people going to hear about you? How are you going to get your name out there? Well, there's another way to do it, and that is to write. Uh, write a book. You know? Uh, now you're th sitting there thinking, well, I've thought about writing a book. Yeah, yeah, no, you have. Every pastor's thought, every leader's thought about writing a book. You can write a book. Uh, if you want some help, I'll help you. Okay, I can't, can't get it published for you, but uh, I do work with uh, people and um, helping them understand how to write a book, how to present it to a publisher. There is, there is a uh, way to do it that is more helpful than others. And... Um, so if you ever get to that point, you want to do that, email me, call me. Uh, you know, we can talk about how do you put a book proposal together, how do you get it in front of a publisher, you know, how do you do this. Uh, sometimes uh, people self-publish their own books. That's very possible today. And self-publishing, the industry has come a long way. Uh, with desktop publishing and things like that, you can produce really high-quality self-published books now that um, have great covers and good design and, uh, and get that out. Uh, articles, you need to write articles. Uh, start by writing an article for your denominational magazine or uh, local newspapers or anything. You don't have to start big, just start small. Uh, now, what you do is when you write an article and you get it published, then you take that article and you reprint it. And you all, when you reprint it, you put it like on a couple of pages of paper, and um, you can put your picture on there, put all your contact information, uh, you know, uh, put the information, this article appeared in what magazine or journal or whatever it is, or whatever newspaper. And then when you go places, you hand that out. You just give it out for free. And that article will get photocopied, it'll get distributed, it'll get, be passed around. Uh, put your name, your contact information. Uh, if, you, if you establish a business, a consulting business with a different name, then put that name on there. You know, start getting your name out there. Give it out for free. Uh, that's a great way to do it. Any article you write, reprint it, get it, that information, hand it out. You put them on a blog, absolutely. Well, Twitter is not big enough for an article, but uh, you could Twitter people and say, I have written an article. Yes, right. Uh, but now the Society for Church Consulting is publishing some articles, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, on, so, 
churchcentral.com. So what you would do is send your article uh, to Tom and uh, uh, his staff will look it over. They can't promise they'll put it on there, but uh, that's the way the publishing world is. You, uh, you get turned down. I just got turned down for a book yesterday. I was feeling bad all day. I didn't let you know. But yeah, that's, that's just the way it works. And I'm a published author, but they still turn me down, see? <clears throat> because what they look at is, will this sell? <laughs> and they said, we don't think this will sell. Okay. I thought it was a good idea. 